are turned off. Um, but this recording is just so for any of our attendees who are or registrants who are unable to attend today or for any of our attendees who are unable to stay for the uh, webinar in its entirety will still be able to view it. Secondly, you will, uh, at the conclusion of the webinar, a follow-up survey will automatically pop up on your screen. This is a new venture for Sunday, so we truly appreciate your feedback. Um, but if for whatever reason you are unable to complete the survey uh, at, at the conclusion of the webinar, or if you accidentally close out of it, no worries. You will be receiving a follow-up email uh, roughly 24 hours from now containing both the recording to the of the webinar and a link to the follow-up survey. And lastly, in terms of questions, uh, we do just ask that you submit any questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen instead of in the chat box. This is just so we're better able to interact with you and uh, essentially for us to be able to record these questions and reach out if needed uh, at, the, at the end of the webinar here. Andrea, was there anything I, I missed? <clears throat> you covered everything well. We did have a few people come in in the middle of the housekeeping there, if you don't mind just going over it very briefly again. Perfect, all right. So first point, this webinar is being recorded, but your cameras or microphones are turned off. Uh, secondly, keep an eye out for a follow-up email containing both the recording of the webinar and a link to a follow-up survey. And lastly, uh, please submit any questions in the Q&A box for us, and we'll uh, do our best to address them either live during the webinar here, or we'll be in touch via email if it's a bit more of a detailed question. But without further ado, we're truly thrilled to be able to chat with you today and we'll go ahead and get started. So we'll continue to expand upon uh, what the Sunday wait is over the course of this webinar, but it is beneficial to take a step back here and, and essentially define this, right? And so the Sunday way is essentially focusing on supporting the whole ecosystem for a beautiful lawn that's full of life. Now, what does this mean? From a traditional or a conventional perspective, right, there were, I would say, three key components of the lawn plan. The first is a pre-emergent, uh, commonly the, uh, found in a weed and feed, for example. So essentially, at the start of the season, the focus would be to apply uh, this product to prevent any weed seeds from germinating, and with that mindset, essentially uh, limit the number of weeds in the lawn over the course of the season. We'll touch on this in more detail and essentially what Sunday does instead in a moment here and then also on an additional slide. The second step, fertilizing, right? So there's your typical or uh, typical action that you're more familiar with, right? Uh, to feed the grass. And then lastly, mowing and watering the lawn over the course of the season. So while there certainly may be other actions that you may complete, these are the three key actions that uh, from a traditional perspective, uh, you would keep in mind for a lawn care plan. Sunday, however, takes a bit more of a sustainable approach. Right? And so what this means is our first step of the season is not to address the weeds, it's to prep the lawn. So this consists of essentially determining what do we need to do to over the course of the season to ensure it's successful. Where the, was there a specific area last season uh, that strug struggled, right? And can we look to address that area before the se season even starts? Do we need to aerate? Do we need to address a compaction issue? Uh, should we choose a different type of grass, for example? Um, we could also begin to consider equipment maintenance. So if we need to sharpen our mower blade, audit our sprinkler system, and this really allows us to consider the lawn as more of a dynamic system uh, that has living components, right? And once we're able to understand or view this, the lawn with this lens, we're going to be better able or better prepared essentially over the course of the season for uh, any changes that may occur. So if you notice one patch beginning to, to brown a bit during the summertime and you realize, hey, this area is a bit compacted or I, I feel that it might have a little bit higher of a clay um, content, I know that the grassroots might be a bit more shallow and I, I can essentially work with that to bring this area back and I might not have to worry as much about the rest of the lawn. The second step, we do have a uh, replacement emphasis on weed control as well. We do offer two post-emergent uh, spot treatments, dandelion doom, which is effective against most broadleaf weeds and is a selective herbicide, so it will not damage turf grass when it uses directed. Uh, and or weed warrior herbicide, which is a non-selective herbicide, so it is effective against both most broadleaf and grassy weeds, but it will damage turf grass if applied as directly. Uh, we'll, we'll touch on this in, in more detail on the next slide. Thirdly, patching and seeding when applicable, uh, just 
We offer a variety of grass seed um, blends, so ranging from a tall fescue mix that we call uh, fescue rescue to a pet lawn blend, which is essentially designed to minimize urine staining from pet urine. Um, and these are available in a variety of options, ranging from a, a five pound bag, uh, meant more so for your general overseeding, and then bigger pair jugs, which essentially has a bit of seed, uh, starter fertilizer, and paper molds to help moisture retention to really be able to concentrate the seed for any small bare areas rather than uh, a general overseeding over the entire lawn. Fourthly, fertilizing is a key point um, or a key component of the Sunday plant, right? And so this is why I would consider to be the, uh, the bread and butter, essentially, of our custom lawn plants. There are certainly other products that we can add on top of this, um, but uh, we'll touch on this in more detail. But this is why I would think of when uh, for a starting point for the custom lawn plan. And lastly, maintaining. So still placing an emphasis on mowing and watering as needed, but uh, being prepared for if there are any problem areas, do we need to address them? Should we look to uh, seed the area? Are we going to essentially apply some topsoil and just let the grass naturally spread into the area, depending on your grass type? So they're certainly a bit more of a comprehensive approach of keeping an eye on the lawn and having a better understanding to be better able to react. So diving into the weed control uh, aspect, Specifically, this is a great uh, slide to really highlight Sunday's approach. So with your traditional approach or most conventional herbicides or uh, on services, your first application is generally a pre-emergent, right? So you apply this pre-emergent in early spring. This will prevent uh, any seeds from germinating for a period of time. And our process here is as long as that pre-emergent is applied, we won't have weeds in the lawn. The concern we have here at Sunday is that uh, a seed bank will continue to accumulate as long as the, that pre-emergent is applied. So those weeds aren't going anywhere, right? They're still within the soil. And then if that pre-emergent isn't applied in the future, we essentially have to exhaust that seed bank. So Sunday, instead of relying on this pre-emergent, we essentially look to address the environmental factors allowing these weeds to take hold, right? Why apply a, a chemical to prevent the weeds from appearing when we may actually just be able to encourage grass to take hold here instead it, and also remove ourselves uh, or remove a, uh, from having to deal with the weeds in the lawn as well. So we essentially allow the seed bank of weed seeds to never accumulate just by working through them each season. Right? And then for any of the weeds which do appear, we do have the two spot treatments. So this is a key difference between the Sunday plan and then your more traditional uh, perspective, right? We do not offer a pre-emergent um, and we instead are looking to essentially follow more of an integrated pest management approach, minimize the amount of bare soil available uh, for those weed seeds to germinate and essentially encourage the grass uh, to crowd out the weeds, if you will. Patching and seeding, uh, an additional critical component of the custom lawn plan here. So as we started to discuss earlier, we offer a variety of grass seed mixes ranging from um, our fescue rescue blend, which is a cool season mix to our pet lawn blend, which is also a cool season uh, blend ranging from the five pound bags to the bare repair jugs. We do also offer a warm season grass blend called Bermuda Time for the five pound bag and then uh, bare repair Bermuda grass uh, for the bare repair option. Now, if you do have a different warm season grass or a warm season grass other than Bermuda grass, so St. Augustine, Centipede, Zoysia, for example, that doesn't mean that the custom lawn plan isn't a good option for you, right? It's still a great option, but we'll just have to chat a bit more about uh, what we need to do in, in place of uh, seeding with our products, right? So with St. Augustine, we might chat about plugging the area if there are any bare spots or essentially adding a bit of topsoil to encourage that grass to spread into the area naturally. Uh, with zoysia and centipede, um, it, it, while there may be seed available, uh, price and then also the germination uh, time can be limiting factors as well. So these are all uh, factors that we can certainly discuss in more detail, but key point here is that if we do not offer grass seed for your grass type, that does not mean that the custom lawn plan is not a good fit. So coming back to this Sunday way here, right, and, and taking a bit more of a comprehensive uh, or viewing it with a bit more of a comprehensive lens, our focus is to ensure that you have a green lawn, right? 
but this is much deeper, deeper than that. So while we're looking to ensure that the lawn is green, we're also looking to improve the soil, right? So making sure that the, if there are any nutrient deficiencies, you will receive a soil test uh, with your first box to address those uh, nutrient deficiencies. We follow or practice uh, MLSN, Minimum Levels of Sustainable Nutrition Guidelines, which essentially means we will send you what the grass needs and nothing else, right? So really having the custom uh, aspect of the plan by focusing on what the soil is showing it needs. Additionally, instead of brute force, we're using plant science. So starting with your first box from Sunday, uh, that box is going to be based on our, your regional soil profile, your lawn size, and your climate data. But the people component, right? So the head of our science team, Dr. Frank Rossi from Cornell University is a key uh, component of our plans here. He interacts with our yard advising team quite frequently, uh, just so we can chat throughout the course of the season, uh, discussing any um, weather patterns we should be keeping an eye out for, any common lawn issues, and essentially just ensuring that we're still having that open dialogue to, uh, to chat from there. So again, the focus here still to have a, to promote a green lawn, but also ensuring that we're improving the soil while also maintaining human, pet, and environmental safety as, as much as possible. Will, and just a quick note here, um, because we're talking about the Sunday approach to lawn care, you mentioned earlier, um, traditional lawn care talks about pre-emergent and, you know, using weed and feed. And we do get a question often, you know, why does on specifics of why Sunday doesn't use that same pre-emergent approach since it could seem like it's the easiest way to go about weed control. Do you have any insight into that? Yeah, that's a that's a great question, right? And so this really comes back to the idea of um, why, why apply an additional product, right, when we can essentially modify the environment to prevent the issue from ever being uh, an issue, right? Additionally, Typically, a pre-emergent is going to be more of a blanket application, right? And so we don't know if there is going to be a weed issue, right? It might be that there's one specific area where that might be a bit more compact, for example, or uh, might receive a bit more sunshine. And if we can essentially modify that environment, we then don't have to treat the entire lawn, and we can also just not have to apply a, a chemical, right? So that's really the, the majority of some of these products and approaches is, is that mindset of, well, there may be... Um, a separate uh, an alternative, right? If we can modify the environment, prevent from ever being an issue, let's go that path. Perfect. All right. So in terms of questions, we did just have the slide here for any questions regarding the custom and so like I said, the, the key component here is the fertilizer, right? But there are all the additional products that we can add on. Um, on top of that, any questions here about the plan specifically? We actually did have um, a couple questions come in through that registration form in, in that comment box. The first one being, uh, let's say someone has already used a pouch, um, let that be from a plan, an existing plan, or one that they purchase sell a cart or with one of our retail partners. So using the example of Lawn Kickstart, which is one of our nutrient pouches, once that pouch is applied, what's next? What's the next step after that initial fertilizer application? Perfect, really good question, right? It's going to depend on the lawn, right? So um, once you apply that Lawn Kickstart, traditionally I would say we'd be looking at your next uh, nutrient application, right? So if there are, if you have an additional pouch set up for the springtime, we'd be wanting to allow at least seven to 10 days or so just to minimize the risk for over fertilization. Um, but if there are any weeds popping up, we might be able to spot treat at that point, uh, depending on the um, where you're at in the, in the country. If you haven't seeded quite yet, we might discuss seeding the grass. So there are definitely a couple of different paths uh, that we could go down, but um, I would say traditionally, I'll keep that mindset. Once you put down lawn kickstart, we'd be looking at the the next nutrient pouch uh, at least you know ten days or so afterwards. <laughs> Thank you, Will. And to add uh, to to your explanation, there a, a great benefit of having a custom plan um, versus you know purchasing fertilizer um, whenever you 
you think it's needed or at the beginning of the season, the custom plan gives you the date range for you to apply. So it's easier to know what comes next after that initial application. Um, and for cultural practices, of course, uh, we're gonna share some resources here shortly with you as well. Um, well, another question when it comes to the, the Sunday system or the Sunday custom plan is the order of, of when things need to be applied and what goes first, what goes next. So a question that was sent in is um, if the lawn has been treated with dandelion doom, um, should should the fertilizer be applied immediately after? How how does how do those products work together? Great question. So um, it, one of the key components to keep in mind here is that the majority of the products are liquid, right? So if we apply a product immediately afterwards, we are essentially diluting the first product that had been applied, whether that's dandelion doom and then looking to apply a nutrient pouch or uh, vice versa, right? Um, so that would be my number one uh, point to keep in the back of my mind. If dandelion doom has been applied, I would essentially allow at least a day or so just to make sure we're not uh, washing the dandelion doom away as we're applying the nutrient pouch from a... Um, from a fertilizer perspective or from a grass seed perspective, we typically don't need to wait quite as long, right? I mean, one day can be, uh, depending on the product, one day is typically a good amount, but the bigger focus that I would have would be just making sure that we're not washing away the, uh, the original product. So if you've applied dandelion doom, I would then start looking at possibly uh, repairing those areas. So depending on where you're at in the country, we might discuss seeding, uh, depending on the temp range and your grass type, or uh, introducing grass in a, in a separate um, separate method, or we might be looking to get going with the next or the, the first nutrient application if you haven't gotten to that point yet shortly afterwards, I'd say within a day or so. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Those are the two we had that were sent in. Perfect. All right. And the second topic here we have were lawn challenges. Any, any questions here? Yes, we do. We actually have uh, a few here sent in in the same format through that comment section on the registration form. So we have a um, we have a, a person that has been struggling with their St. Augustine grass, and this um, might sound similar to, to a lot of people. They have pets, so of course it, there's a possibility that the pets might be causing some of this damage on their St. Augustine. Um, so besides the pet spots, uh, struggling with the lawn itself staying green, but um, you know they've had their pets for a while, and it hasn't been such an issue in the past with the lawn. So do you have any recommendations, any insight into this issue? Yeah, another great question. So a, a couple of thoughts here, right? And the first being, that's a great observation to note that, hey, the, the pets have been a factor here for a number of years and it seems to be a much, it seems to have become a larger issue recently, right? So that makes me think that the pets might not be the only stressor here, right? But it's sometimes beneficial to take a step back and determine if there is a stressor, we can just start eliminating what we know is, is present, right? So it may be beneficial from the pet perspective. We do offer a product called Pet Patch, uh, which is essentially a product designed to minimize urine staining. So that could be applied two to three times per season or so just to minimize a urine staining. And that would be a, a good product just to essentially make sure we're minimizing the, the stress from the dog urine. In terms of other stressors that might be present, um, it, this is where we can take a bit more of a, a comprehensive approach, right? If the grass doesn't seem to be greening up, could there be a, uh, uh, an environmental factor or a soil factor that has changed that's essentially preventing that grass from establishing? So it could be something as, um, I, I keep on coming back to compaction here. You can tell it's one of my favorite factors to consider, but uh, if it could be a, a compaction issue, um, and essentially those grass roots weren't able to establish quite as deeply as we prefer. And potentially during the summertime is when we start to notice more stress. And so those shallower roots are more susceptible to heat stress. Uh, if there was a, a climate event, for example, so if you had a, an extreme cold event within the past winter, St. Augustine is going to have a, um, is going to struggle a bit with the cold. So that could be a factor here. So there are a number of approaches or paths that we can essentially uh, take my focus would be first uh, determining if we need to get 
new synog into any of these areas, we essentially top dress the area a little bit and either install plugs or just let uh, the St. Augs spread naturally. We could chat more about um, watering schedule, uh, soil, et cetera, and also consider the pet patch um, for the dog urine. But this might be a great example for a conversation to continue offline. <laughs> yeah, we'd be happy to reach out to, to um, the person that reached out with this specific issue and just offer a little bit more insight and gather some more information as well. Um, we have another one related to lawn challenges. And you've partially answered um, this one, but anything else you could add? So this person wants to learn how to grow a thicker, denser lawn and also how to get it to green up more as well. All right, thicker and denser. So again, I would consider if there's any reason that the grass is not able to establish thickly, right? So if it's an area if it's just a general thinning, right, then it might be more of a large scale soil, soil issue that we could discuss. Come back to compaction. Um, it could be chatting about the, the watering schedule here, just to make sure that we're essentially providing the best environment uh, for this grass to establish. Um, from a greening up perspective, again, I'd be concerned just essentially, is there anything stressing the grass? So while uh, our nutrient pouches or fertilizer may be a good starting point, right, it's not necessarily the first step that I would go to in terms of a solution, right? There are a number of other factors that we might be able to adjust slightly just to ensure that the nutrient pouches are uh, provide the, the most benefit. Thank you. All right, and then lastly, heading into the resources here. Before you share those resources with us, I want to point out a comment that did come in through that form. Um, somebody mentioned that they're new to this, uh, to this entire lawn care um, situation, just lawn care practices and best, um, you know, uh, basics and order of operations. And um, they'll be excited to know that at Sunday we offer uh, a good amount of resources uh, for people that are new. Perfect. Yes, we certainly do. And so diving into these resources specifically, the first resource that we have here is only available to uh, our custom lawn plan subscribers, right? So you would have to be an active subscriber, but some of our other resources are more uh, are open essentially. If you have more general questions that you'd like to consider before signing up, we'll be able to address those as well. So with each custom lawn plan, you do have access to your My Plan page. I believe Andrea started to touch on this earlier where essentially we provide recommended application dates for the nutrient pouches, right? So you're able to keep track of when exactly you're supposed to apply each pouch uh, and proceed from there. You can see that I was a bit uh, lazy last season and I missed my second and third application. And there is the option to maintain a checklist essentially. So I'm able to uh, be reminded that I still have those pouches on hand. If there are any products that uh, you do have questions about or you feel the, um, instructions that are included uh, that don't exactly address the questions that you have. We will be covering this in just a moment in terms of our, of our support contact information, but we're always happy to chat to ensure that uh, we address any questions regarding application. Secondly, also uh, for any of our, once you sign up for a custom lawn plan, do you have access to your lawn data page? So this is a great page um, highlighting some of the behind the scenes information essentially driving your plan. So for example, for your growing season, average amount of rainfall, what we expect your soil composition to be based on your regional soil profile, and then some of the more uh, interrelated information and growth potential driving essentially the start of the season. So not necessarily information that's critical for you to have a successful season, but great information for us to be able to refer back to and be able to chat with you about. Your soil, uh, your soil test results. So just going back to the previous slide here. So this regional soil profile and some of this data here, the regional soil profile is what we expect for your region, right? So it's certainly possible that uh, your specific lot doesn't have this exact composition. So we'll frequently receive questions 
uh, from customers who are have new build lawns, for example, right, where that top layer of soil is typically removed, and so the soil isn't quite representative or isn't uh, quite represented by the native soil per se. But this is still great information for us to have, just to have a baseline understanding of essentially what would we be working with um, if this were just the native soil, right? But then. As we transition to your specific lawn, you do receive a soil test for your specific lot to address any of the nutrient deficiencies in your specific lawn. So you can see here um, information that, again, isn't necessarily critical uh, for you to have a successful season but on, from your perspective, but from a yard advisor's perspective, this is all great information to be able to discuss what we expect to be occurring within the soil and if there are any adjustments that, that could be made. All right, transitioning more so into resources that are available, uh, whether you are a current subscriber or, or not, uh, we do have a blog called The Shed. And the Shed offers articles ranging from um, more comprehensive uh, articles, such as how to test for compacted soil and how to uh, resolve the compaction issue, sticking with my favorite theme, I guess, to uh, more, uh, I would say, more creative articles that focus more so on how to create a plant, for example, in, in your backyard. So great variety of articles. Also available to everyone is our YouTube channel. So on our YouTube channel, we offer uh, videos demonstrating how to complete some of the practices we recommend, such as auditing your sprinkler system, um, product overviews and how to's and chats with our very own Frank. <laughs> Again, webinars, this is a new venture, but we're extremely excited to be able uh, to be offering this this season. I know that we are coming up on time here shortly. So like we said, you will be receiving a recording. So if for whatever reason, um, you do have to leave, no worries, you will be receiving this. So in terms of webinars, up next, we will be covering our long tier B6 webinar, which will be uh, discussing watering, mowing, and fertilizing, and essentially how it relates to the Sunday plan. Dealing with weeds will be hosted by Andrea and one of our other yard advisors uh, discussing or taking a bit more of a comprehensive approach in terms of weed control. Order of operations is going to be less so from a product perspective, but more so from a uh, practices perspective. So for example, when to aerate in relation to the Sunday plant, whether or not to dethatch and when to do so uh, in relation to the plants. That, that's going to be a great one to stay tuned for. And improving your home landscape is also going to be hosted by a couple of other uh, yard advisors, but one that I, I desperately need. So they're going to take a, a comprehensive look at essentially choosing plants for the backyard and building your, your home landscape. <laughs> Perfect. All right. In terms of customer support, so we are available seven days a week from 9 to 5 p.m. Mountain Time. And so we do have our general customer support team, right? The yard advisors are part of this team. So we do have access to the support at GetSunday.com email. Uh, you can also reach us by phone at this phone number. You can also text us if there's an image that you'd like to text into us. You can uh, send photos via text. But if there are any specific questions related to what you saw today or you'd like to chat specifically with the yard advisor, please feel free to reach out to uh, webinars at GetSunday.com. And that is all that we have. Andrea, are there any last minute questions here before we wrap things up? No questions. Just appreciate everybody um, that was uh, here with us that attended today. Like Will has mentioned throughout the webinar, you will receive a recording with the um, of this webinar and some additional resources from the shed, from our YouTube channel, and as well as a survey if you don't have a chance to take it after. The webinar is, is finalized here, but thank you very much for, for attending. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure. <laughs>